You have to be careful. She's just going to bring it in check for the whole year. She's going to do that. All right, well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Mark Robinson with the Minneapolis Financial Group. You've seen me, heard of me before. I see a couple of new faces here. In our ongoing series for our Lunch and Learns through the West Financial Credit Union uh, today, as we've talked about in the past, when we're covering a topic such as home and auto insurance planning, we always want to bring in the experts that are going to provide you with the information hopefully that you're looking for. So at this time, I'd like to introduce uh, Mr. Mike Zumbush from the Insurance Brokers of Minnesota. Mike? Thank you. <clears throat> Hello, everybody. <clears throat> it's great to be here, and hopefully you'll uh, learn something as we're going through this. And I uh, can ramble on to things because there's so much on insurance to talk about. And so it's, you know, to start off with, why do they call it a pair of pants when there's only one? Anyway. Um, so going, going along with the with the agenda, we'll just keep following that so that we're staying on task and getting done at the proper time. And if you guys have questions while we're going through it, by all means, we can. If there's a short, short answer, I'll give it at the time. Otherwise, I have room at the end of the agenda for a question and answer to answer questions because it might be more specific to others, somebody than it is to others. So again, the introduction part. I'm Mike Zumbush. I have an insurance agency. A brokerage uh, out of Buffalo, Minnesota, right in front of Cub Foods. I've been in the insurance business for 31 years, uh, a little over 31. Going on. Anyway, and I have three fully licensed staff. Um, we have many, many carriers, uh, ones that you see on TV and, and uh, many other ones besides. Um, the, uh, the, The, 20, the, the E on there, the 24th uh, the service that I'm talking about or that, that's on that point uh, on the last one, the introduction, is where after hours or holidays, I want to make sure that clients are taken care of so I have a live service. So when they're calling, they're not talking to or getting a voicemail, they're not getting an answering machine, they're actually getting a live person uh, to take care of my clients. The, the broker versus captive, the next one, it really the 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 carriers there's so many carriers out there and it's the insurance industry is so large and it's not uh, if, if, if each individual risk is gets to be so much so if you have um, a restaurant one restaurant can be different than another using commercial insurance uh, personal insurance you can have two people side by side the same exact house the 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 uh, the house built the same year and everything and the rates can be totally different because of all of the changes that's come into play and again I'm, I'm trying to stay on task here we'll get we'll get into that in a bit here down the next thing down the CBIS is part of that um, the the difference between I was a captive agent with American Family for like 26 years um, and it's nothing against the the captive agents uh, when you think of captive what do you think of this a bird in a cage type thing um, and it's not that they the different companies that are uh, again the agents that work strictly for those companies are it, that that's a bad thing uh, working for state farm farmers insurance american family country insurance but that's all they have is those carriers or those the, the the underwriting and the and the and the products that that particular company has to for sale Oops, I got to my phone. Um, and so sorry about that and so the the issue with the with the again going back to the, to the risks, certain companies don't aren't keyed up or don't like the certain uh, particular risk. If I can keep using that word because that's what it's called in insurance. So with with multiple carriers, I have a lot of options that I can use for taking care of clients, and that's the main reason I left American Family. Um, there is no allegiance that I have uh, with any company again. I'm not anything against the other companies when you're when you're just writing for one, but um, you're, you're you're really that's your source of of income, your source of your avenue to go after for underwriting. So I, I it's it's more now where I can take care of the clients, which is my whole intent, versus having any allegiance to a particular company. There's more options and endorsements that I can get with a certain, uh, with different companies. So I have companies that just key up on a, like again, using restaurants as an example. 
Um, it was the same example I've had before, so we're staying on task. There's companies that I have that just specialize in restaurants or specialize in a rental properties or special because of the, the, the different areas of expertise and marketing that these companies have use or have. Um, the things to know that affect insurance, uh, we touched on a little bit earlier, the, the CBIS, and again, don't want to make notes, that's fine up to you guys, but the, the uh, if you didn't have a pen, I have pens at your desk, I should have brought that up right away, but it's a three function pen. So the, the uh, if you take it apart, the yellow on the bottom is to prevent the battery on the light from being uh, discharged while it's being shipped. So that comes off and then it's a light, and then the other end, if your fingers are big like bigger like mine and you hit on your cell phone, you hit two or three numbers or letters at a time, that end of it, that rubber end is for that purpose and for your computer and then they use a cross, like a cross pen on the inside. Anyway, through the process, you want to take notes, that's why I have some pens there for you and you take them with you when you leave if you like. Um, and I have a few different colors if the ones that you have are to your liking. The, again, credit-based insurance score is what CBIS stands for. So the, the, all of the carriers now, as of, oh, I'd say probably five years at, at, or so ago, they are all now using credit-based insurance score. Uh, it's not a, it's a soft hit, so it's not like going to a bank and getting a loan or your, your, your credit unit for that matter, or any place where, you're, it's, a, where it's a credit score. It's credit-based insurance score, so they're looking at your, your score or your history, but there's not, it, it's not a hit against you, it's a soft hit, but that's what the rate is based off of. So I could have a score of X number amount, and my rate for my home here could be higher than the next door neighbor, so kind of going along with what I said before, trying to tie it all together. So you got two places identical, same, same year built, same square footage, everything being the same, but the risk is different for two main reasons. One is the credit-based insurance score. That's the biggest one by far. I, I, I'm not at all agreeing with how insurance companies do it, but this is, that's how they do it. I used to use, I've been doing this, like I mentioned, 30 long time. So when I, for the first, oh gosh, up until maybe 20 uh, years, 25 years in the business, I would say to people, they'd come in, they want to have a rough idea what it would cost for insurance on their home. And I would say, two, I'd have a 250, 250, 250 rule. And two, take, take a breath. Are you talking about your your rating, your financial rating score, yes, and that your insurance cost is based upon that? Yep, it's a rate. It, it, it's, a, it's a little the different. The different your rating, the cheaper your insurance. It's the up rate. Okay. And it's a it's a little different than just uh, again a credit score like you like what we're saying going to the bank, but it would be similar. I mean it's it's so the use that past claims and insurance will be in there. Yeah, the claims is actually another part of it. So you got claims that come into play on the property, and it can be on the property before you own it. So it's it's really important to get some numbers or some pricing on it before you buy a place so that you know what you're looking at for price for for premium. Um, there's more, there's more I can go into there, but it's, it's, it's yes, it's credit-based insurance score is a scoring, but it's, again, a little bit different than it is going to a bank. Um, but yes, the, the, the scoring is a huge factor. Um, the, the other part of it that comes into play is the claims. Now, it used to be where claims were not affected on a nature, nowadays you can't say acts of God, but the acts of nature or things of the are now. nature is that last politically correct. Mailed. So anyways, nature, uh, having an issue, uh, some kind of issue with the property that you own, now that's looked at as a negative on your insurance, when you're going for insurance. So you're being charged for, or could be canceled because of a, of a claim, nature related or not, or human factor, so human factor being a pipe burst in your house or fire, yes. So Mike, if I'm buying a house and the previous owner has made claims for water damage and mold, that's going to affect my insurance rates when I buy the house. Is that what you're saying? Correct, yes. Again, because unless, it, unless uh, yes, yes, I'll just leave it at that. There, there's, no, 
to explain a little bit more. If there's a situation, let's say it was water damage from uh, the landscaping not being done correctly, and the landscaping now is taken care of, that helps that situation get better because the claim that caused the problem or the issue that caused the problem for the claim is now remedied or taken care of. Existing conditions? Yeah, existing. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. I thought yeah. that was illegal. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's a lot of things going on, that's for sure. And I, what I was starting to say before is uh, the companies, the, the, they, a lot of companies didn't use credit based insurance score. And to, to finish the rest of that statement, the 250, 250, 250 rule I used to use was a $250,000 house with a $250 deductible was $250 a year. Now, it's been 10 years at least, or eight or 10 years on any of your homeowner insurance policies that you've seen that it's even been close to 250. I mean, it's, it's the 500, 800, 1,000, 1,500, again, depending on the risk or the insurance score makes a difference. Um, claims on a property, or talked about that. Motor vehicle record, the fifth of the uh, D on that part of the, of, of, of the agenda. You, if you have, and that's pretty much a common, everybody knows that, but your credit-based your credit -based insurance score is an issue when it comes to your insurance on your motor vehicle regarding car or vehicle insurance, but it also comes into play, obviously, on any, any vehicle, anything that you're driving. So whether it's a business vehicle, a vehicle for your personal, um, it can even come into play on uh, boats, on four-wheelers, besides the cars or the vehicles that you drive down the highway and, and the, the concerns for it. For her. And I laugh about it because it's, it's like, geez, really? That, you know, now you can get a motor vehicle or you can get a, a, a ticket, as everybody knows, or most people know, on a lake. So if you're violating any, any drinking or speeding limits or whatever on a lake, on a boat, then those, could, those are considered a motor, goes on your motor vehicle record. And, or they could be putting them on your motor vehicle record. That makes a difference on the rates they have. And so it gets to be a, a lot. But motor vehicle record, that part of what I'm talking about there is, is if you see the words or the initials MVR, MVR stands for motor vehicle record. And the, and the, the, the more risk is involved, in other words, if you have a DWI, a careless, eluding a police officer, vehicular manslaughter, uh, driving after revocation. There's many other ones that I could go into, but those would be major violations, and a major violation affects your insurance majorly. Let's use that because it's easy to do. How it. long do they reside? Five years usually. Some companies look at it for three years, that they charge for it for three years, but they look at it for five. So your your the some and most companies use a point rating on it. So I'll just use certain companies uh, that would use like for a DWI it would be a nine point rating. So nine points it's different than the state. Now that's another whole thing. I, I don't need to want to take time going into that. But the state rates it as a different point factor, point rating than it does for the insurance companies. The end result's the same though. So if you have a major violation, those. Usually, if you have two major violations within a five-year period of time, that you're you're just automatically in risk, uh, higher rates. Um, you're you're if you have one that's over three years old, and it's only one in five years, then that usually will you'll be able to qualify for preferred or better rating, lower rates. Um, Drivers in the household, and again, maybe I'm getting ahead of myself somewhat here, but if you have a husband and wife in the household, or husband and wife are fine, but the kids are a driving kid is an issue, um, that you can have that child put on their own policy, have them get their own insurance, or have them have their own insurance with that your agent that you're with, whichever, whichever um, and or with that same company that you're with, having that person being in a rating all by themselves, so that if something happens, they can't come back after the household. And again, there's a lot of things I don't put in here because I don't, I don't know how much to go into and, and I don't time-wise, but um, if, if you have a person that's in the household that does cause a problem for you, that person's car being, if if again, our child, you just keep sticking with that example, if that child under 18, they can't own anything until you're 18 years old or older, so that child having a vehicle has to be licensed and titled in parent's name. 
Well, if it's titled in the parent's name or somebody else's name, it doesn't have to be parents, I'm just using parent now households, it can be a business insurance situation and what have you. That that husband and wife or that family, that person that signed for, that has the, the owner, the title, and that the vehicle title in their name, they can be at risk. So if it goes over and above the limits that the person has on insurance, the, the child now, again, I'm trying to make sense of this all, I'm hoping I, hopefully I am. So if it's a 17-year-old kid, they have an accident, they, but they have their own insurance because a lot of parents want to have the kids by themselves so that there's not an issue when it comes to the, the, the insurance if there's a claim. So the kid has his own insurance. Well, the limits on their insurance, if they get exhausted, then they can go after the, the title owner, the, the, whoever owns the car, and after their insurance. Or if it's in the household and there's an umbrella, which I didn't even go into sound that on here, but an umbrella is another part of it that you can get to give you another layer of protection. Um, yes. So the um, 16, 17 can have their own policy? Yep. The rate's going to be a lot higher because of the fact they're by themselves and they don't have any other discounts coming into play. In other words, there's no home and auto discount. There's no multi-vehicle discount. There's not an age discount, you know, for the parents. You know, but, you're, but what you're saying is you're creating a brick wall to get at the owner's assets. You're trying to break. You're trying to have it so that, right, they're right. trying to save them. <coughs> save the parents, save the, you know, and it doesn't have to be parents, it could be grandparents, it can be an aunt and uncle, it can be, I'm just using an example that most people can relate to. There, there, there's, we could go into a lot of just different scenarios, same with a business, and again, I don't want to, because we're talking home and auto, but commercial insurance is another thing, so if there's a partner involved, that's another situation that could come into play, so you want to have the partner cause, uh, that, that partner could cause a problem for the, for the partnership or the owner. The business owners too. So, so as a yes. point of clarification, if my 17-year-old has a standalone policy, and by virtue of the accident they hit the limit on that policy, if I'm the owner, they could actually come after my policy that I had to have separate and go to the limits on that one as well. They can try and come after you as well, or, in, or, or they can come after assets, or right, or more just as much or more so, Mark. They can come after you personally. Wouldn't even be the other, your other car. Is that other insurance. other company's going to cover you for your kid, or you have them on there anyway? Mm -hmm. And that's where the, actually the umbrella part comes into place. So you could have an umbrella for <coughs> mom and dad, or a business owner. Again, I keep using that because I don't want to have it where it's it's because it's all can be the same. So, but for the the additional layer of protection, an umbrella would be an idea to have for the average household. And an umbrella is fairly reasonable. It's, it depends, again, on the situation for the risk now and the credit-based insurance score and all, a lot of things we've, we've already talked about. But it, it's, it's, an, it's an extra layer of protection for maybe $200, $250 a year would be a rough guess, depending how many cars you have, how many drivers you have, how many other toys you have. So boats, motorcycles, four-wheelers, a lot of things come into play. Um, and again, it's, it's uh, kind of not be be laboring at all, but I want to make sure we're, we're at least trying to clarify it. So, um, insurance to value the 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 E there under that segment, that is another issue. And when I end up being talking, I end up getting warm. So if I can take out this and make it a little bit more comfortable for me, um, the credit or the the insurance to value is another thing where. Let's say you, your house, uh, uh, this could get somewhat complicated, so I'm going to try and make it as easy as I can on, the, on that part. Insurance to value is really what you, what you are trying to insure your house for, your rental property, your farm rent, your other, your, your seasonal, your any, any property. And the reason you want to have insurance to value is two, twofold, really. One is that your mortgage company, which is in what we're talking about, but it gets, it's a little bit down further, but it's tying in there. The mortgage company is going to require you to have insurance of value at least enough to have the loan covered. Well, just so everybody knows, it's, it's illegal for the mortgage company to make you insure for something more than they are at risk for. So in other words, if you take out a loan uh, for a piece of property, for 200000 I'm just using some numbers, and the actual risk factor is a hundred thousand and again some of this I didn't put in there because it's we, we can talk about this goes really deep so a hundred thousand dollar property is the risk 
but the loan is for two hundred thousand because the credit warrants it, or people want an extra hundred thousand to fix up the property or to add to whatever, put an addition on, or whatever, a number of things, pay off some other notes, whatever. So they got a two hundred thousand dollar mortgage all wrapped together, but their risk is only a hundred thousand. They can't have, they can't make you insure a place for more than the hundred thousand even though that's what they're trying to do. There's a Minnesota statute that, allow them, that prohibits them from doing it. A lot of agents aren't aware of that. So if that ever happens, just have your agent checking into and say, well, it's a Minnesota statute, you cannot. And it's, a lot of the mortgage companies aren't, or the people that work with the mortgage aren't even aware of that. Um, but the Minnesota statute will save that. So that used to be a really big issue when inflation, when everything was, was higher years ago more and more now are, are aware of the fact that, that they aren't, uh, they can't require somebody to do that. So, and that. so that's one of the insurance to value things. The other thing is you want to make sure that you're covered because there's a, a co-insurance that comes into play with all companies, most of them, 99% of them, when it, again, without, without going into too much detail here without making sense of it, it's, it's a form three, it's a form, it's a policy that most homeowner policies should be. And I say should be because with that you're going to get replacement costs on your house and on your personal property. I would highly advise that you have both of those. And the replacement cost comes into play when it is a house that, let's say, again, this co-insurance to so tie that in. Let's say it's a $100,000 piece of property. The mortgage company or the insurance company is going to want you to have it insured for at least 80% of value. So in that scenario, you need to have $80,000 coverage on your home so that you don't have a, 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 what they call a co-insurance penalty at the time of the loss. So they'll allow a 20% cushion. So in that scenario that I'm trying to give, that I'm given right now, if it was an $80,000 policy that you have, but the house is 100 or the property, again, well, let's just use our house because the program is home and auto. So a $100,000 house, you don't have to insure it for the 100000 and most companies won't allow that to happen, but there are companies, being a broker again, that we can do that. And the reason I say that is some people don't care to have the whole, they don't want that amount of what that, what that house is now, they don't plan on, if it's something happens to it, they don't plan on replacing it as, as it is anyway. Or it's too old, or the market value, which is another whole part of it, but I'll touch on that in a minute. Anyway, so you got a $100,000 house, got $80,000 coverage on it, and if there is a loss, the max that you're going to have is 80000 But you won't have a co-insurance penalty coming in to play on a partial loss. So let's say you have a $50,000 loss, and it's an, you got it insured for 80000 Again, the house is 100000 value to replace it. You would have a co-insurance penalty coming into play if you only insured it for 50% of the value. And I know it gets to be involved here, but it's, it's, I run into this a lot. And so I want to, the more I can educate people, the better. So again, a $100,000 house, if, if to, to avoid the co-insurance penalty, you need to have 80% or more. But if you have a situation where you're, somebody isn't doing the right job, it's a $100,000 house, you only insured it for $50,000, what would happen at the time of the loss is you're going to have a co-insurance penalty that comes into play. So using a $50,000 loss, like I just started saying, they're going to take your $50,000 loss and cut it in half. Now you're only eligible for half of that $50,000 loss. Now you're only eligible for $25,000 on it. Out of that half comes your deductible. More and more people are going with 1000 and higher deductibles to save costs on insurance. Now what I was saying before a little bit about the market value, companies Again, a lot of direct rating companies don't offer that, but being a broker, there's companies that I can go with that will give you a market value coverage. So, again, going along with what I'm talking about, because it's, it can come into play in homes, but most of the time it's, it, it, it's both business and home, so personal and, and commercial. But if it's a $100,000 replacement again, and it's the market value is only $50,000, you can get insured for $50,000 without having some of this co-insurance issues, and I know I probably totally messed everybody up, but are it's cheap, really right? the rate. The, the, the overall premium is, but the rate per hundred or per thousand is more because of the fact that, look, okay, look at it from an insurance company's point of view. If you've got a $100,000 risk 
and they're only insuring, somebody's paying them a premium on 50% 50, 50 of it, 50,000, the insurance company is going to say, hey, you're only paying us 50,000 or 50, a premium on $50,000 worth of risk. So which 50,000 of your $100,000 house did you want coverage on? Well, what are you guys going to say? The part I, I, want, I, want, I want it all covered. They're going to say, <laughs> sorry, Mario, we're not able to do that because you're only insuring your house for 50%, 50,000 of it. So that's where this co-insurance comes into play or the actual cash value, which is another part of it that we could go into. But actual cash value is actually what the house is worth. So again, I'm trying to stay on task here. I don't know how much time I have left here. But so if the, if the roof to actual cash value thing, using that as an example, because the roof, when you buy a home, your your or put on a new roof. Let's just stick with that so it makes it shorter. A, a roof is 20 or 30 or so, 25 year roof. So the life on the roof. So if it's a 30 year roof and you are 15 years into it, well, that you're basically 50% of your life on your roof. Just like when you're buying cars, tires for your car. You got a $70,000 70,000 mile tire and you got 35,000 miles used on it. Well, when it comes to the insurance on auto now, it's a little different than how they're handling it for on your home, but that's changing. And I don't, we can go into that more too if we have time. But, uh, so let's say on your auto, that you have a 70,000 mile car tire, you've got 35,000 on it, you're only gonna get half of, the, of your value to buy a new tire because you've gotten half of the life out of your car. Sorry, the car tire, truck tire, whatever. And yeah, we could, we could go, I, does it, do we, yeah, should I, should the whole I go into more of this? I mean, yeah, replace the whole tire, no question. Yeah, it depends, yeah. yeah. It's, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's not a tire. Um, optional coverages that you can get, um, and again, I'm trying to make sure we see in the time frame. Yeah, it's only noon, so relax. Okay, all right. <laughs> well, I have an attention to, as everybody, people know me, I'm very see, intense and I talk fast question. anyways, but I want to make sure yeah, I'm getting yeah. everything in. Um, and leave any time for, if there isn't any questions at the end, more questions at the end. Um, the optional coverages that I have there is on your, for the home and for the auto both, it comes into the, the many things come into play. I just put a few down here. Schedule items on your home would be like jewelry, fine arts, guns, precious moments, home interiors, um, any kind of collections that you might have. I've had over the years uh, Ray-Ban sunglasses insured. I've had Persian rugs insured. I've had uh, a, a, a grizzly bear rug. I've had, I mean, it, it, there's so many things that you could schedule separately if you wanted because all homeowner policies are a certain dollar amount on, on items. So you're going to have a certain dollar amount of coverage for the electronics in your home. We're going to have a certain dollar amount of coverage for jewelry, fine arts, rare coins, you know, certain dollar amount of coverage that you're going to have for those things. So to have an additional amount to cover what you have at risk, I would really advise to schedule it on your home to make sure that you have the proper coverage. It's very reasonable to do that. So jewelry, let's say. Jewelry is probably rounding off, let's say, a dollar a hundred. So $10,000 ring cost you ten. I mean, it's very reasonable to do that. Um, a, gu a gun, $500 gun, um, you, you, it's, it, the rate usually is a buck and a half to two dollars per hundred, um, depending on the company and, and the kind of what, what your particular item is. Um, Glassware, there is coverage for theft and for certain perils. Perils, P-E-R-I-L-S, perils mean causes of loss. Causes of loss for fire and for vandalism and for theft and so forth is on any Form 3 homeowner policy. But for breakage, uh, it depends on what your item is now, but for breakage, it, there isn't. So if you schedule it, you have coverage for breakage as well. So if it happens to fall off the wall or, you know, the shelf breaks and something, you know, precious thing on the on the shelf break falls and breaks, you can have coverage for it. So since so, it's kind of tax time, you're saying to schedule, it means to itemize it. Yeah, itemize yes. Itemize separate from your policy. Yeah. You care uh, enough about uh, it. You, you can step, yes. Most people are, though, yes. Scheduling and listing is the same, itemizing it. but. Most people will put it on their homeowner policy. You can get a separate policy, that's what they call a personal lines floater, personal floater to cover things. And the reason people do that is so that you don't have to claim on your home because it's going to be such an issue with the, on the claims thing that I mentioned earlier. So I'm trying most to tie that back most together. Most policies, though, separate the actual structure from the contents. 
Correct. And, and you get a certain amount of coverage or proportional coverage on the contents, but you're talking about things above and beyond what would be normal furniture contents. You're talking about guns, jewelry, things like that that you want to have special riders on, right? It's great to have extra coverage just because if you schedule it or list it or itemize it, use the Mars word, you waive okay. your deductible. So if you've got a thousand dollar deductible, because so many people now are having higher deductibles because they're trying to save premium. So if you have a thousand dollar deductible, you have that coming out of your pocket. If one gun or one piece of jewelry or one precious moment or one rug or whatever, you you you'd have that thousand out of your pocket first. If you schedule it or list it or itemize it, like Mara said, you then would waive your deductible. And so you also get what they call all risk coverages by scheduling something where you have just what they call named perils. And again, I didn't put that on here because it's... But named perils is they're naming what they're covering for. They're naming fire, they're naming lightning, they're naming vandalism, they're naming, you know, uh, wind yeah. on. Uh, they're naming what they're covering for. All risk when you schedule something is pretty much covering it no matter how, whatever would happen. So, most... Question? Okay. Okay. Go along with what he was saying on, on the personal property, the uh, most the, the minimum amount that an insurance policy can have with a form three, which is what again you everybody that is would be your job to make sure that it would be the agent's job. But the form the form three is, is for sure what you want to have coverage or that's the type of form that you want to have on your homeowner policy, where you have minimum of fifty percent for your personal property coverage of the home. So if the home is insured for 200000 you're automatically going to get 100000 for personal property. Then of the personal property, that's where you want to schedule like we're just talking about. So you have 100000 total, but you might not have the amount of coverage you need for each individual item that means the most to you. Okay? Um, when you, when it's, uh, again, that's, there's more, more I could go into there, but there's other endorsements that you can add on to your home. Um, some of it goes on to that other sheet, this sheet here, on the home, and the, 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 the top part of it is on the auto, the next part is on the home, but to stay on the home for a little bit longer, on the home, you can add identity theft on. That is going to be much more of a risk factor, as everybody's hearing on the news, and all these come Target, and and all these companies that are having this breach of you know, all these issues with identity theft, uh, but it happens a lot on two person to individuals. So I would really advise to either add that on. There is some companies that will give a token amount of coverage on your base policy, but you want to have it at least ten or fifteen or twenty thousand, and that's really reasonable to add on by endorsement. <coughs> Excuse me. Another one that you can add on. Is is sewer and water back sump pump and or water backup sewer sewer backing up or sump pump failure? That's also a huge issue, depending on where you live again and what's happened with the, what happens with the weather. But if you have a situation where you have three inches of rain at one time and then all of a sudden that water doesn't have any place to go other than coming into your base, you know, backing up through into your basement or your your sump pump can't keep up or your sump pump quits or lightning strikes your house and your sump pump is run off of electricity, the sump pump no longer works, so now you have the, the, the water backing up in your, into your basement. Well, you can have a lot of basement, a lot of your house and personal property destroyed or really damaged badly by that scenario. And so having sewer, sump pump, sewer backup and sump pump, it's all one endorsement that's added to a homeowner policy that you could take care of that, just that risk for you. So, yes. That's separate from flood insurance. <coughs> right, right. Flood, yep, flood would be a different, um, and I'll answer that more. Than that. Is there a difference between sewer backup with too much rain versus a clogged sewer? No, if you, if it comes from your, if your sump pump, too, from too much rain and sump pump is able to keep up and comes in your house, then that, as well as the sewer backing up, that all be one. But if the water came, which kind of touches on the flood thing, if water, too much water comes in through a window, or, or it gets above the floor and it just comes in through the, then that would, you need to have coverage, flood insurance for that. However, flood insurance has some other things coming into play and I don't want to take a lot of time on it, but you have to, if you're out in the country, you have to have two acres that are covered with flood water, flood water. Or if you're in town, you have to have a, a place on each side of you that has uh, water damage from the same storm, same issue, before, before flood insurance would come into play. But if the, water, the sewer backup 
deeps of rotor, rotor issue, is that viewed the same? Yes. Yeah, if, you, if there was a situation, well, if, no. if, if it backed up, depending on, right, if it backed up and it was because of that, then your, your, your damage to the home would be covered by this endorsement. Okay. But the result of what caused it to happen from being flooded, you, you, you still have an adjuster possibly could cover that in there, but generally that's a maintenance issue. Yeah, yeah. Okay. but I mean, because it wasn't maintained, it's great. And it can back up. The damage would be covered, yeah. but not the maintenance. Right on. Okay. Right on. Rooter insurance costs. Yeah, okay. that's what I figured. But yeah, no, you I think no. things sometimes this way yes, this way no, but they look like the same. Straight, exactly. That's okay, great. thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. You're welcome. Um, <laughs> regarding, and again, there's more on the home that we can talk about. I'll try, we'll go into a few more when we, we have time here when we get through this. Um, your, your personal auto insurance. There's coverages that are immense on that um, that whole insurance product uh, for car insurance. The amounts of coverage, there's five different parts of the auto policy that your personal auto that come into play that's required by law for you guys to have. And so that would be the bodily injury, the property damage, the first two lines on, on anybody's declaration pages, your policy, when I say declaration pages, it'll have the, the first two lines on that will be the, prop, the bodily injury and the property damage. The next one down is the personal injury protection, which is the average person knows says no fault insurance. The next one down is the uninsured and underinsured motors. Those five are required by law to have. The limits, which I didn't put on here because I didn't want to confuse, make it worse here, but the limits that you are able to get in Minnesota to cover that that requirement is only thirty thousand per person, sixty thousand per occurrence, and ten thousand for property damage. Well, that's a joke. So, I mean, relics on the road cost more than ten thousand. So, if you caused a damage of of up to a vehicle from your negligence, well, you could easily, easily, easily be over the 10,000. The only option they have then is to come after you personally. The the bodily injury on the, the top line, well, again, on your policies, the 30,000, well, $30,000 coverage, you can be, both of my parents at one time, my dad's long dead, but both of my parents at one time were in ICU. Well, back when my dad and mom were in it, which again goes back a number of years, and my dad's been dead since '98, um, there was 22 and 26 thousand a day for intensive care. So if you cause somebody to be that hurt, well, 30 thousand is, is is a nothing. So you, I would really advise you guys to have at least 100, 300 thousand limits of liability, um, and then the same 100 thousand for property damage. There's again without going into CSL stands for combined single limit, so your policies might say that, or it might be a split limit, which means 100,000 for each person, 300,000 for the total occurrence for bodily injury, 100,000 for property damage. That's what they mean by split limit. So you got combined single limit or split limit. Your your the next level of protection there would either be to raise that limit up to from the 100, 300. Let's just use that limit to 250, 500,000, or have an umbrella. So the umbrella would give you an extra million. The minimum issue on an umbrella policy is a million. So you'd have a million over and above your 100, 300, or above your 250, 500,000. That, again, get that again, that umbrella figure, like we're talking about premium, like we were saying before, you're gonna be somewhere in the 200 to $300 a year range. So it's really reasonable for covering you and give protection because it covers not just your auto, covers your home, covers your rental property, covers your, Motorcycle covers your to all your other toys. It gives you a lot more coverage on on things. Now, regarding the 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 home again, staying on the home, and because the next portion, the no fault that I mentioned earlier, got a little ahead of myself, gets to be a lot. And so, but it's very important coverage for everybody. So I want to make sure that that's why I'm going to finish try to finish with that part. So on the home. Which is the the point of the letter G on the on the on the things to know about of that effect insurance? The deductibles you can get a thousand, you can get fifteen hundred, you can get five hundred for that matter. Very few companies are offering less than a thousand now because of all the claims. They're trying to get rid of what they call nuisance claims. So they're trying to have all the smaller claims get out of the way, not have those coming into play because that costs a lot of dollars more by far than the five hundred dollars having somebody 
adjust the claim and hold nine yards. And so they're trying to adjust their premiums based on that. So the, you, it's very common to either have what the, the years ago was called a flat deductible. A flat deductible means it would be a 500 or a 1,000 or whichever deductible you choose on anything that happened. Now it's getting to be a 1,000, let's say, for most things on your home, most perils, again, perils causes a loss that you would have that comes into play. But on wind and hail, you'd have a $1,500 or a $2,500 or a $3,000 deductible. And the reason for that is because the last eight, nine, ten years, Minnesota or the upper Midwest has been just inundated, nailed with wind and hail losses. Everybody, <coughs> excuse me, knows somebody, was somebody, or a neighbor or whatever that got nailed by wind or hail. Everybody. There isn't anybody that doesn't because it's happening all the time. So the weather service, the whole national, the, weather, the weather pattern, but the National Weather Service has, has, has dictated that this whole area has changed so much. And so it's not if we're going to get storms, it's how bad we're going to get them, how much we're going to get. So when you guys think of the example I'll give you, what, what do you think of when you think of Wichita, Kansas? Climate change. Torment tornadoes, right? Yeah. Twisters, they call them down there, yeah. same thing. So now Minnesota is going to be known as a state where Minnesota, not just Minnesota, but upper Midwest, where wind hills are, are just a very common thing. It used to be where insurance companies wanted to come to Minnesota because it was almost a guaranteed profit for them in property. And there's more to it than that, but that's, but now the last eight, ten years that hasn't been the case. So insurance companies now are trying to stop their juggler, stop the bleeding, so they're going with higher deductibles or a wind hail deductible. There's also what they call a percentage, which is where the next, on, on that line, where it talks about percentage. Percentage is, and again, I won't, I'll just use one, but it's not knocking them, it's just it's one company, State Farm, well, now say a 1% or a 2%, I've even seen more than that, but 1%, 2% of their coverage A, which coverage, and that's how they state it on the policy, so that, that's why I wanna, I'm using that terminology. So coverage A is the coverage for the dwelling. So again, using a hundred, to make it easy, a $100,000 dwelling, which is coverage A, 1% of that is how much? Um, $1,000. So you could have you could have a two hundred thousand dollar house. Well, then it's two thousand. And but if it's two percent, which they're going to, or one and a half percent, it's not a deductible. A certain a flat again using that you not a five hundred or a thousand anymore. It's a percentage of your coverage. Well, a lot of people aren't. They they weren't advising people. They did, but they did it through a letter and. How many people, when you get something from your insurance company, what do you do with it most of the time? They hit me with 4%, okay? Yeah. I got hail damage, I thought it was covered. 4% of the total value was almost the total cost of replacing mm -hmm. the roof. And I didn't know they did it to me, and I dropped them flat and went with a company where I'm paying a flat rate because of Yeah, that'd be a good example right there, so 4% is... It's high. It's higher than most of them. Experience is the best teacher. Yep. Yeah. So, so his, his, his issues. A year later, not he got the roof anyway. <laughs> it cost me a grand. His, yeah, his problems or his <laughs> issue now is not everybody a lesson. So, anyway, 15. and that's something you could just ask the, the the agent that you work with, just to make sure what it is. Hey, what kind of what's my deductible? You know, because that's what everybody wants to know. Okay, required insurance by law or mortgage companies and lien holders. No fault insurance. Um, that is where I want to have a really a good understanding for everybody and and uh, yes you're right I probably I do I'm very intense and I'm very tough but I, I want there's so much to cover so that's why I'm going as fast as I am and that's my nature anyway so if you want me to slow down at the end let me know and I will but I don't want to have it where we don't have time to get through it so the personal injury protection part of it again that's the no fault part so to continue on with what I said earlier I'm trying to have it again doing different parts of it so it ties it all together. So the five parts of it that I mentioned to you before that's covered, that you have to have covered, is the bodily injury, property damage, liability, uh, uh, personal injury protection, which is what we're going to talk about now, and then the uninsured and underinsured motors. Those are the five required parts. Mortgage companies, which are, 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 isn't coming into play when it comes to your autos. Lien holders are and credit unions are. 
and anybody financial institutions that are in, that are insuring your vehicle, they can require you to have certain limits. And I'm getting that's going down further in the in the part there. So stop staying at the top part there with the personal injury protection. If you have an accident, whether it's your fault or not, which is why they call it no fault, you would have individuals that are in the car or that are in the household. You have a minimum of twenty thousand dollars medical coverage that come into play. You have the, the options of increasing those coverages up on an individual car or by stacking. That's what it's called. That's the proper name it's called. It's like, sounds like you're flipping pancakes, but that's the name they call it, stacking. So if you have two cars or more, you can stack. So if it's, if the, again, the minimum, the limit is 20000 So if you have 20000 on the one car, now you have two cars, you got forty. If you have three cars, you got 60. If you got four cars, you got 80. The individual coverages in the in those uh, the, the, that those coverages when you stack it is also quadrupled or doubled or tri quind uh, tripled, whichever you have. So the work loss now that comes with the personal injury protection is five up to $500 a week. So if you have two cars and you stacked it, you'd have $1,000. Now that's come into play, and I can't use any examples of somebody in the room can do without their permission, but that definitely can come into play where you have way more than you, the $20,000 that you've used for medical and or you need more coverage for work loss. So when you stack the coverages, everything is stacked. Everything's doubled, tripled, quadrupled, whatever. The cost for it is very, very minimal. It's a little bit more for youthful drivers because there's, there's such a high risk, but it's still worth doing. And a lot of people don't want to do it because they're already the cost for insurance is already too high. So you've got the medical, you've got the work loss, you've got what they call essential services, and you have funeral expense. That's all covered underneath the personal injury protection. Way more than the average person even knows what you have. So my reason for spending so much time on it is by far the most risk that all of us in the room have is your vehicle or driving whether it's your fault whether it's the weather's fault which ends up being your fault or if it's somebody else's fault you could get hurt and have damaged your car but bodily the, the the individual people in the room is my concern so that you have more coverage for yourself if something should happen whether it's your fault or not which again is why they call it no fault now, without going, that's why I didn't put this part on that I'm going to talk about now, but there's, you have to have at least $4,000 in medical damages before you can sue the negligent party. And I don't want to go into a lot of that, but they call it the tort, T-R-T threshold. So you have to have a threshold of X number of dollars before you're able to sue somebody, which is why, without going into <clears throat> Can really get into it, but that's why chiropractors had such a bad name for so long because they kept milking the situation along to get the medical bills up high enough so that you could go after somebody and sue them. It's just there's a, there's more to the story, but I just and I'm because I'm not I'm not I don't my intent is I'm not getting, but I want to make sure you know why I'm bringing that up. Your your coverage is that's that's again funeral expense, a minor amount. But there is some coverage for funeral expense. That's where you want to get a hold of Mark and Mark to get more life insurance. So if something happens, that funeral expense part is, is nothing. It's, it's somewhere between 10, 11, 12,000, depending on what you want, 14,000 even for funeral. So the, the expense for funeral. So the amount of coverage that's on a, on our policy isn't enough. It was 2,000. That's all it was at one time. And they just recently, in the last three or four months, I can't even remember what the date was. I want to say it's like October 1st of last year. They raised, it used to be only $250 for work loss. Now it's 500 Huge, huge amount. Property damage or physical damage by the lien holder. A lien holder can require you to have X number of dollars coverage on your car for the maximum amount of deductible and the maximum, um, your, the, the, they dictate or they can dictate your limits of liability more so when it's a lease vehicle, which is, which is C. So if you end up leasing a vehicle, and I'm not sure what the, what the credit union here is or any, but that's something that, that you'd be able to find out from them. They'd be able to say, okay, you need to have 100,000 limits of liability and we won't allow any more than a $1,000 deductible. Mortgage the mortgage companies, those, they would require you to have your 
property insured, whether it's home, rental property, farm ranch, business insurance, whatever it is, they would require you to have this insurance. And again, and we talked about that way back when I'm trying to bring it all tied together in the end here. Um, so the, the the residence, the rental, like I said, property, farm ranch, that's where this, this the maximum amount of coverage comes into place so that you have the coverage in place if something would happen. Um, the bank, you know, requires it again. So you've got the law that requires it on the autos, but not on the home. But the mortgage companies require you to have coverage on what something you have a loan on, which is why I was talking about before about the, that they can't make you insure for something more near the risk loops. Now, a little bit, because I'm just about to the end of my time here, is there any, on this, on this sheet here, this one where, this is a personal check off that I've been using forever, so that I don't forget it, even though, as you guys know by now, that I'm, I talk fast and I got a lot of things to go over with people, I don't want to miss something. So I, I use these, this, these sheet and I have my staff doing the same thing, so that we're making sure we're taking care of clients. Bottle injury, property damage, you talked about that. That, my advice to you guys would be no lower than 100, 300,000. So that if something happens, you know, the, the issue I said before about having somebody in the in a ICU, well, let's say you cause a multi-car accident. It's not your fault. Your tire fell off your car or a flat tire or you, uh, you, you slipped on ice or whatever. Well, somehow you caused a multi-car accident or you caused a semi to go in a ditch. Well, the semi, the tractor alone, just the tractor on a semi is $100,000, $150,000 easy if it's a cab over. Then the trailer they're hauling could be another 50, 60, 80,000. Then what they're hauling in the trailer could be another 100,000. You see how easy, unbelievably easy it is to get over the 100, 300,000 limits? And if, they, if we go over that and you guys have assets, what other option do they have? The lawyer's going to try and go after or whatever they can, guys. I'm just telling you how it works. Personal injury protection stacking, we already talked about that. Emergency road service, you can add that onto your automobile if you want to. That's a smart thing to do that. Um, or you can get AAA too, for that matter, and separate, which again, being a broker, I can do that. Pickup topper. A lot of people have a pickup topper, but they're not sure how much, if it's covered or not. So it's something you want to make sure with your with your carrier. If it's covered on your vehicle or off your vehicle, it's just sitting when it's when it's when you're done using for hunting or fishing. Customization, electronics, devices, anything that's customized or added on extra onto your car that you paid that wasn't on it when you bought it. That you just want to make sure it's covered in your on your with your auto policy, loan lease gap coverage. That is where you took out a loan for a vehicle, and you, first of all, you bought the vehicle and you drove it off a lot. What happens? You get in an accident. It goes downhill big time. So you got a ten, twenty, thirty, fifty thousand dollar car. You drive it off the lot, which is really like really this is fair. You should have that. And it, yeah, you're down now five, ten, twelve thousand. And all I did was have one tire on the pavement outside the parking lot and my car dropped that much. Well, the loan lease gap will take care of that gap. So it's it's definitely something you want to check into. Diminishing deduct pardon me. Without accidents. Don't go far with the accidents. Okay? I was just kidding. 